Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics Live! Woo! Coming up, we're joined by Jeff Wolsey to look at updates to Windows Admin Center and the latest hybrid capabilities, from Hyper-V and live migration support, hybrid options to configure backup, point-to-site VPN, and VM replication in Azure. And please join me in welcoming Jeff Wolsey back to the show. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Has it already been a year, Matt? It is it's, awesome to be back. It's actually been a little over a year. And the, and the last time you were on the show, we saw the general availability of Windows Admin Center. And since yep. then, there have been a ton of updates, both for enabling hybrid and managing your Windows service wherever they are. But before we get into those updates, for those of you watching that aren't yet familiar with Admin Center, it's an evolution of the Windows Server inbox management tools and consolidates local and remote server management tools into a single app that you can run in the browser. And best of all, it's without any agents. It can manage Windows Server wherever it's running, physical, virtual, on-prem, or in the cloud. You're absolutely right, Matt. And best of all, if you already own a license for Windows or Windows Server, it's a free download for you. So Admin Center provides the ability to manage servers and hyper-converged infrastructure, like Azure Stack HCI and enable hybrid scenarios. We're really glad to see that Admin Center adoption is off the charts. And we're seeing millions of servers under management every single month and our hardware partners have embraced Admin Center too. Last year, we showed Admin Center integration from Fujitsu, Data On, and Lenovo. This year, we're adding Dell EMC and HPE, among others. Awesome, can we take a look? Absolutely. So here you can see that I am connected to an HP ProLiant server. I can see critical hardware info like the hardware health, firmware, and software versions. Here's another view showing how DIMMs are populated, speed and types of DIMM, including NVDIMM. And then also they have things like a help screen here with important support links to find everything you're looking for. And it's pulling straight from ILO there, which should be familiar to anybody. Running Absolutely. HP if, you're, if you're familiar with ILO, it's plugging right into all that. So it's awesome to see HP plugging in. What about Dell EMC? Oh, I'm so thrilled to announce that Dell EMC is here as well. So let me give you a showing. First of all, let's start off with the fact that um, Dell EMC is also taking full advantage of our new dark mode capabilities in Admin Center. And before we get right into it, let me also point out that this is a cluster manager plugin. So this isn't just looking at a single server. This is looking at an Azure Stack HCI Dell EMC cluster. That's a mouthful. <laughs> well, you, you did it eloquently. Thank you very much, Matt. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's head on here and click on to the S2D cluster and connect into this. And right off the bat, you can see I don't, I'm not looking at a single server. I'm looking at four nodes. So right off the bat, it's telling me there's something red. There's something critical here with four of my nodes. So you can see CPU and memory look OK. The storage controllers look OK. The physical disks, oh, wait a minute, power supplies. In fact, I got four healthy and four critical. I have a suspicion at what this could be. So if we click on the red physical disks, you can actually see the component name. And yep, just what I thought, it looks like we plugged in, um, these have redundant power supplies. Looks like I plugged in one of them, but I forgot to plug in the second set of redundant power supplies. I also have memory, I also have network devices, and physical disks as well. So I can see what types of disks and how they're attached. And of course, here's my, my power supply plugin as well. There's also iDRAC integration. And the thing that's really cool is this new update compliance. So now I actually see the overall cluster view of my Azure Stack HCI solution from Dell EMC, and I can actually see what is compliant and what is not. OK, I'm doing OK on the back plane expander. I'm doing OK on some of these. But there's some devices that are non-compliant. There are some devices that need to be updated, some firmware and some drivers. I have all of this information readily available right here built into Admin Center. So think about what you've seen here. Dell EMC's admin extension plugs into the HCI cluster view so that you can see multiple servers together quickly identify issues and provide the update compliance view with links for remediation. It was, it was actually me. I unplugged the service to plug the vacuum in, Jeff. So I I'm told you, don't <laughs> vacuum the data center, Matt. <laughs> so really useful stuff. We see the OS and the hardware integration in the same console. Now, we've recently seen a, a ton of other new tools added to Admin Center. Oh, absolutely. So based off of your feedback, we've added a bunch of new tools into Admin Center. We now have tools to help you manage Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP servers. Let's take a quick look. So creating users is a snap. Click on Create User, and here you can go in here and add the user information. Mm -hmm. And if you want to configure specific properties just like that, boom, you're done. If you need to reset the password, which is a very common action, it's right here, right on the front screen, right there, ready to go. 
Now, switching on over to DNS, if you need to create a DNS zone, it's as simple as, hey, creating a new one, typing in my zone file name, just like that. And then switching on over to DHCP, if you want to configure new scopes with new IP ranges, reservations, leasing, all of that information right here built in the admin center. And all of that should look very familiar to those who've managed it through the traditional consoles. Absolutely. Excellent. Now, one of my favorite capabilities in admin center is to use it to manage Hyper-V VMs. Yes. Hyper-V in admin center is one of the most popular tools used in admin center. And let me show you something a bunch of you have been asking for. So, here, I've got a number of virtual machines. Five of them are running, four are turned off. So let's head on over here into the inventory view. And you can see this is basically running on some pretty pedestrian hardware. I've got a number of servers running 2008 R2 up to 2019. I'm going to take this line of business application. I'm going to move it to another server. Well, live migration is now built in. I can live migrate to another server. I can live migrate into a failover cluster. I can live migrate out of a failover cluster. And you can see right here, when I do the live migration, it asks me, do you want to put it on a specific path? I'm going to go ahead and choose the default Hyper-V host setting. And one more thing to point out, I'm about to do this live migration, but this is a shared nothing live migration. So it's going to move the memory state and the disk. It's going to move the entire VM, not just the memory state. So let's go ahead and get that started. We're going to begin that process. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Move. And while that process is starting, let me show you some other cool features. So one of the new features we added in the Hyper-V tool was the ability to tag virtual machines. So I'm going to head on over here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose a few VMs. Again, I'm running 2019 on a number of these. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to select these. And what's really cool, Matt, is I can come down here into Edit Tags. And now I can go in here and create a new tag called Windows Server 2019. Yeah, makes sense. Go cl click on Save on that. And now that I've tagged these VMs, I can head on up to the filter view, click on filter, and say, hey, only show me the Windows Server 2019, and boom, I only see those. So tagging, really simple, all built right in. In the meantime, let's create a new virtual machine. Let's call this new VM. You can see by default, it's a generation two VM. I'm gonna go with the default location with two virtual processors. If I want to enable nested virtualization or run a hypervisor inside of a hypervisor, I can. I'm going to configure dynamic memory. I'm going to configure a minimum of two and a maximum of six gigs of, of memory. I'm going to add a network adapter plugged into my wired network. I'm going to add a storage. I'm going to add a, create an empty virtual hard disk. I'm going to come down here and choose an ISO file, because I'm going to actually install a brand new OS from the ISO file. So I'm going to head on over here. I'm going to go to my ISO location which is right over here. You can see the VM just finished moving, yeah. all the, the memory and storage. I'm going to click on this ISO file, click OK, and click on Create. Just like that, I've created a brand new VM. Now, it doesn't show up. Why? Because I've enabled the tagging. So let me go ahead and disable the tagging, turn that off, click Save, and you can see there's the new VM I just created. So in terms of that live migration, it's done. Let's head on over here to the other server. This is Silver Node 4. This is Silver Node 3. And there's the VM that we just live migrated to. Nice. So think about what you've just seen here. I've just live migrated a VM between two standalone servers, no constrained delegation. It all just works from Admin Center. Nice. Now, Hyper-V is obviously an incredibly popular plugin for Admin Center. What about some of the other popular plugins? Ah, uh, yes. So if you look at the past 20 years, one of the most popular management tools built in is Perfmon. Now, while it's received some minor tweaks, we wanted to deliver really a richer experience. So we've added performance monitoring now for the first time in the Admin Center 1910. Let me show you. So here I am in the performance monitoring tool. And I'm going to actually click on over into a blank workspace. And let me show you what this looks like. So literally, it's a clean slate. So I'm going to click in here, and I'm going to start adding counters. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show you all of the counters you saw in traditional Perfmon, they're all here. It's exactly the same set of counters, OK? Nice. Except we put a beautiful new UI on this. I'm going to do an easy search for this. I'm going to look for processor. It shows me all of the processor objects I can look for. I'm just going to choose a standard processor. I'm going to look for the uh, total number of instances. And I'm going to choose um, some specific counters, like privilege time, processor time, and mm -hmm. user time. And you can see right off the bat, as we make those changes, we start getting real-time data starts flowing right into Perfmon. 
So you can see just how visual, and if I mouse over it, I can see exactly what the values are. So currently, most of this is just idle. I'm not doing too much big, no, no biggies here. If I want to expand it for a bigger view, I can. But of course, what I want to do is I want to add more counters. So this is processor. What goes with processor is memory. So let's go ahead and do a search here for memory. And in fact, you can see I've got GPU memory, Hyper-V memory. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with standard memory. And you notice when I mouse over, it's giving me all of the detailed information on the counter. I don't need to know what committed bytes are. I can literally just go to committed bytes, and it'll tell me exactly what this counter is for. So you don't need to go looking through documentation. We've made it all right there, built right into the perf mod. And so you can see I'm looking at available bytes. I'm looking at committed bytes. And again, you're seeing in real time, this information is all coming from the server right here in, in, in Performance Monitor. If I want to click on Add Counter, I can just keep adding counters. We'll make more. Now, what I love about this is because later, when you ask me, hey, Jeff, I'd like to see this, I can save this workspace. I'm going to give it a name like Demo. I'm going to save this workspace. I'm going to head back on over here. And you can see now that if I sort by name, there's the one I just created demo. Well, what if you're a file server or a networking, or what if you want to look at one you created before, like mm -hmm. this one I created earlier today, or processor networking in memory? So this is one of my favorite views. I've always wanted this view. So at the processor at the top, I've got idle time processor and user time. But look at the network adapter. I can see all of, the key, all of the network information I've always wanted to see is right here and readily available. As soon as I did this, I immediately noticed notice something about the server. It's running a bunch of desktop NICs. So you can see at the bottom, it says RSC average packet size and coalesce packet sizes. I'm not getting a performance booth because these are running desktop network adapters. If they were running server network adapters, I could take advantage of RSC and I'd get better performance. So that's something I got to take care of later. Nice. And that data is coming in in real time as well. All of this coming in real time from the server being shown here. Nice. Another one is file server. Anybody have a file server in their, in their infrastructure? Yeah? <laughs> well, here I created one that actually looks at the SMB server. And actually, this is a brand new, brand new file server, so I've got very little info on here. I've got to, I've got to change this sometime. Um, but you can see here, I can see average data, uh, data bytes on all of these. And in fact, things like failed durable handles, failed persistent handles, total file open count, I can see all of this. So when I connect to a file server, this is the stuff that I'm looking for. And because I have these same saved things, I can share them with you. you can, we can share them amongst our, our, our friends. Nice. Yeah. So this is my, I have to show this last one. This is Hyper-V hosts and guests. So for years, I've had people tell me, gee, Jeff, how much overhead does the hypervisor use? Well, I've always said, it's really, really tiny. Well, now I can show you. The top is the host partition, the parent partition. You can see the hypervisor runtime is 0.3. It's less than half a percent. So it's almost nothing. On the bottom is the hypervisor runtime for all of the VMs, which is almost nothing, a half a percent. So when you see, look here, it says guest runtime 30%. It means most of the time is Hyper-V is actually running the guests, not running the hypervisor. And so now you can see it for yourself how much time we actually spend in the hypervisor, which is almost nothing, because awesome. it's a super highly optimized solution that we have with Hyper-V. So this is really just the beginning. Suppose you and your colleagues have your own favorite views for performance monitoring. Now you can save these and even share these with your colleagues so that you have a common set of monitoring views. Awesome. Awesome stuff, Jeff. Now let's just think about what Jeff showed. This, this solution will manage any supported Windows server, yep. whether it's in your data center, whether it's in a branch office, whether it's a physical machine, a virtual machine, on-prem, or across any cloud. That's right. And there are now even more things you can do for hybrid. So for example, here's the Azure Hybrid Services tool, where you have one view for all the hybrid tools in Admin Center. Here, you can enable Azure Site Recovery to protect VMs, use Azure Network Adapter for point-to-site VPN, Azure Monitor to monitor server health, Azure Update Management to patch your systems, Azure Backup for your data protection, Azure File Sync for virtually bottomless file servers, and Azure Security Center to monitor across hybrid environments. Awesome. So yeah, some great updates for hybrid configurations there. But what other things can we do with Admin Center's integration with Azure? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. There's something I've been dying to show you. This has been a little secret project we've been working on. So here I am in Admin Center, and here I am in the All Connections view. Now, I've always had the ability to do things like come on over here and add new servers or even add some PCs, or for example, add clusters. 
And in fact, we now have a new option to add an Azure VM. So if you create an Azure VM, you can actually have it appear right here in the connection list. But what happens if you think, you know what, I actually could use some new Azure VMs. Wouldn't it be great if you could actually create those right here from Admin Center? Well, that's exactly what we've done. We have this new Create New VM option. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you can see right here, I'm going to start right into the Create Azure VM work workflow. I'm going to go ahead and choose a resource group. I'm going to go ahead and give this VM a name. This is me, so it's going to be yeah. Windows Server 2019. Why not? Obviously. The region I'm going to choose is Western United States. The username, I'm going to use my cache credentials. You don't have to watch me type in names and passwords. And now, all we have to do is choose our size. And the beautiful thing about Admin Center is because we're actually communicating with Azure and we're using the Azure Resource Manager, we actually are getting these directly from Azure. So you can see I have all of the sizes that are available in this region. I'm going to sort by virtual processors. You can see I have up to 72 virtual processors. And get this, up to 448 gigabytes of RAM, Matt. That's nice. That's nice. It makes a great Quake server. <laughs> so I know what you want for Christmas, Matt. But unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get in trouble if I, uh, if I, if I actually deploy one of these. Uh, my, I'm pretty sure my corporate Amex is not going to cover well, that. Well, we can use a personal, personal card. Oh, personal okay. card. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work at home either. So I'm going to go in here and choose a more standard size VM. I'm going to go with something like, say, an A4 VM. This has eight virtual processors. It has 14 gigs of RAM and up to 16 data disks. OK, so this is a more standard looking VM. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and choose the disks. So right off the bat, it uses a standard SSD for the OS. I'm going to configure the first one, data one. I'm going to make this 200 gigabytes. And in terms of the disk type, let's go ahead with a standard SSD. And let's go with read-only caching. Now, I can add up to 16 data disks. At this point, I'm totally fine with just one, so I'm not going to add in anything else. Next, we get to the next step, which is, guess what? If I'm using Express Route or if I'm using the new extended networking that we just introduced, I can actually domain join this thing. So now I can have this VM running in Azure join my on-prem domain. Or if now, you had a DC in a Or if I have already. a DC running in Azure, too. So yeah. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to not do the domain join right now. Um, next, I'm going to head to networking. Now, the resource group already has a default network, so I don't need to do anything. It's already been selected for me. So now I'm going to head to the bottom here. I'm actually going to review what I just did. I'm choosing an A4 VM with a standard SSD. It's got one data disk. It's using the virtual network of public VN1. And now I'm going to go ahead and create this. And just like this, boom, baby, I'm creating an Azure VM. You can see it's creating disks. It's creating the network interfaces all from Admin Center. I never left this a single time, OK? So think about this. Now we're going to click on the link to Azure. And you can see right here in Azure, here it is being created. The deployment is underway. So here's the network. Here's the disk. Well, it looks like I have a little credit remaining. I'll use that for later. And the VM compute is being hooked up right now. So that's all happening right now in Azure. I'm going to go back to Admin Center because we have a, a, a fixed amount of time here. And by the way, when that's done, I can then add that VM into the Azure VM using the new Azure VM capability in the Admin Center. So really, folks, it simply couldn't be easier. Awesome. What do we think? Yeah? It's good stuff. Awesome stuff. Yeah, so many, so many awesome updates from OEM plugins to Hyper-V Live migration and a long, long overdue update to Perfmon. Plus the integration with Azure Resource Manager, as Jeff showed, building VMs directly in Azure via Windows Admin Center. But if you're new to Windows Admin Center, how can you find it and get started? Oh, man. If you haven't already started, you can download Windows Admin Center here at aka.ms. Everybody pull out your cameras right now. <laughs> aka.ms Windows Admin Center. Again, if you already own Windows or Windows Server, if you have a laptop in front of you running Windows, you already own this. This is a free download. Everything I showed you is built in Admin Center. It's all all part of your Windows license. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. And of course, keep watching Microsoft Mechanics for the latest updates. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now. Thanks, everybody.